in the previous videos, uh, we saw how the uh, liquid vapor mixture and the dome area can be exploited to construct an engineering device such as the Rankine power cycle. Uh, in this video, we will look at how the same dome and the two phase region can be used to drive the opposite effect, which is to use useful energy such as mechanical energy or electric power to drive cooling, that is to drive heat from a low temperature reservoir to a high temperature reservoir. And uh, this is what we will do in this uh, video. So, what we are talking about is uh, refrigerators or refrigeration cycles. And uh, there are uh, different ways in which the refrigeration effect can be achieved. One of the ways is called vapor compression refrigeration. And in this type of refrigeration, a vapor of a refrigerant is compressed to a high pressure and then cooled in a condenser which takes it to a saturated liquid and then to a subcooled liquid state which is then expanded in an expansion valve to result in a low pressure, low temperature refrigerant which is then ready to pick up heat or energy from whatever needs to be cooled and then uh, it returns back to the entrance of the compressor where it is compressed back again. So, that is the cycle that we are going to see in this video and that cycle is called vapor compression refrigeration cycle, right? And what are the some of the vapors that could be used or some of the refrigerant that could be used as the working fluid? Uh, we could use R134A, uh, also called HFC134A. There were refrigerants that were used earlier that were harmful to the ozone layer. Those were called chlorofluorocarbons. Those have been replaced now by hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs and those are relatively benign. And, uh, but we could also use ammonia in some cases, we could also use carbon dioxide as the refrigerant. So, some refrigerants that are uh, used, uh, refrigerant is the working fluid. And uh, these examples include uh, R134A or also called HFC134A and uh, ammonia and also uh, carbon dioxide in certain cases. So, depending on the application, depending on the temperatures involved, depend depending on the um, application including whether it is a domestic refrigerator or an industrial refrigeration system, we could use different refrigerants. So, for example, in a domestic refrigerator, ammonia is not used because ammonia is considered hazardous. And so, therefore, we use HFC 134A or 134A, right. So, uh, we will look at how the two phase region uh, acts as a medium that could be then used to drive this refrigeration cycle. So, let us again look at the TS diagram for HFC 134A or R134A. So, this is temperature and this is entropy and this is for R134A. And uh, so, this is the dome and so, as the name suggests, we compress a vapor. So, let us look at a vapor that is a saturated vapor, uh, let us call that state 1 and let us assume that it is uh, it's compressed such that its temperature and pressure rise to a relatively high value and then uh, it is expanded. Uh, or it is cooled in a condenser uh, until it gets to a subcooled liquid state and then it is expanded in a, an expansion valve uh, to reach a state that is, uh, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5, 6 and then uh, comes back to 1 uh, by absorbing heat from whatever needs to be cooled. So, let us uh, write down the steps again, uh, 1 to 2 is a 
vapor compression. And uh, state 1 is saturated vapor at uh, let us say about minus 18 degree Celsius and about uh, 200 uh, or 1 140 kilo Pascal. And uh, state 2 would be a superheated vapor that is uh, at a temperature of about 50, 40 to 50 degrees Celsius and uh, about a pressure of between 1 to 1.5 mega Pascal. So, it is a very high pressure. Um, let us recall that 0 0.1 mega Pascal is one atmosphere. So, 1 mega Pascal is about 10 atmospheres and 1.5 mega Pascal is about 15 atmospheres. So, it is a very high pressure uh, refrigerant that is circulating to the condenser of the household refrigerator or the condenser of the household air conditioning system that we have in our houses. Um, then uh, we have 2 to 3. Uh, this is a condensing or in a condenser, it is a heat rejection step. In a condenser, this is um, sensible because uh, this happens when there is a change in temperature from 2 to 3, right? And uh, so, 3 is a saturated uh, vapor at about um, 35 to 40 degrees Celsius and uh, about uh, 1 to 1.5 mega Pascal. And uh, 3, 2, 3, 4 and 5 lie on the same isobar. Right. And then uh, we have uh, 3 to 4, uh, we have again, we have heat rejection in a condenser. And although uh, the 2 to 3 cooling as well as the 3 to 4 and 4 to 5 happen in the same device and that device is called the condenser, condensing is only one part of the process that takes place. The other parts are sensible cooling and uh, condenser being uh, the part where the temperature does not change, but the heat is lost to the surroundings. And so, uh, we have uh, 4, we have saturated liquid at uh, the same condition about 35 to 40 degrees Celsius and about 1 to 1.5 mega Pascal. And uh, then uh, we have 4 to 5, uh, we have again, we have heat rejection and uh, this is uh, sensible cooling again. This is not much. so. At 5, we have a subcooled liquid at about 35, 30 to 35 degrees Celsius and uh, the same pressure 1 to 1 1.5 mega Pascal. Um, remember that this temperature here, the 40 and the 35 and the 30, all of these depend on, of course, the atmospheric temperature. If the atmospheric temperature is, let us say, 45, then we cannot go below 45 in the condenser. So, if the atmospheric temperature is 45 degrees on a hot summer day in Gandhinagar, then this temperature would be at the least 45. In other words, it is likely to be more like 50 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Celsius. So, uh, this is for a condition where uh, the outside temperature is more benign, like maybe perhaps about 30 degrees Celsius. But when the outside temperature is higher, then these temperatures are also higher correspondingly and the lowest temperature in the condenser will correspond to the outside atmospheric temperature. Perhaps it will be hotter than the outside atmospheric temperature because it is trying to lose heat to the outside. And so, that is something to keep in mind. These are just typical temperatures. These could change depending on the operating temperature on that particular day at that particular location.
right? And then uh, we have five to six, we have um, a expansion. Uh, this is a free expansion that results in uh, Joule Thomson effect. Um, so, this is uh, typically adiabatic. And uh, so, the reason we show that in a dashed line is because this is an irreversible process. We do not try to get work out of this expansion process because the work output that we can get is potentially very small and the device that needs to be built to take advantage of that work output is uh, relatively more expensive. So, we do not try to get work out of 5 to 6. We just allow a free expansion and whenever we have a free expansion, we do know that uh, there are irreversibilities. However, uh, this process is ideally occurring at constant enthalpy and so when we do such a process, uh, we have, we achieve a reduction in temperature and that is what we have from 5 to 6 and uh, we are back at, so 6, uh, we have uh, uh, saturated liquid vapor mixture. which is uh, at about uh, around minus 18 degrees Celsius and around um, 140 kilopascal, right. And then um, 6 to 1, I will write it here. So, 6 to 1, we have heat absorption. That is, um, this in other words is inside the refrigerator, uh, basically trying to cool down the refrigerator by absorbing heat from the contents of the refrigerator or if it, we are talking about an air conditioner, then this is the unit 6 to 1 that is inside the house, um, which is called the uh, evaporator and this is where the refrigerant evaporates uh, by absorbing heat from the air inside the room or from the objects inside the fridge and evaporates to become a saturated vapor, right. And the unit that is outside is called a condenser because that is the unit in which the, uh, the refrigerant condenses uh, from a superheated vapor to a subcooled liquid and uh, in that process rejects heat to the atmosphere or uh, to the uh, room, whichever is the case may be. And so, this is the heat absorption step and uh, this is uh, evaporation. So, uh, this is how cooling is achieved in uh, what is called a vapor compression refrigeration cycle, also called as VCRS. So, it is called VCRS, vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Um, just like the Rankine cycle, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle is very commonly found. However, it uses very high quality energy in the form of electric power and it is also um, has other has a hazards such as using refrigerants that may be hazardous or harmful to the atmosphere. And so, there have been replacements to the vapor compression cycle um, that have been proposed and that have also been commercially demonstrated. However, this again remains the by and large the most common way in which refrigeration and air conditioning is carried out. In the next video, we will look at how to calculate the COP values of such a vapor compression refrigeration cycle.